Debra Duncan, Lemonade Fast, Colon Cleansers, Verbal Detoxing, Juice Fasting, all of Hollywood's doing it, and they say it's all in the name of purifying their systems. Do these new age remedies really work? Can man live on juice alone? The juice man says yes he can and should. Plus, a Houston woman shares her story of how she used coffee to save her life. The Dirt on Detoxing. That's tomorrow at 9 on Houston's own Deborah Duncan, right here on ABC 13. Colon cleansers, herbs, juice fast, lemonade cleansers, even the way some people use coffee. Hollywood's biggest stars are doing it in the name of purifying their systems. Today on Deborah Duncan, it's gone mainstream. What do all these people have in common? They say their health problems went away when they detox their bodies. How do you do it? And does it really work? Next on Deborah Duncan. It's Houston's own Deborah Duncan. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in our studio audience, and thank you for joining us at home. How many of you would like to be a little healthier? <laughs> Lose maybe a little bit of weight? Yeah. yeah, well, our guest today says you can do that, and he says he's going to show us how. More and more people are getting diseases like cancer, kidney problems, and stomach ulcers. And our first guest today says that's because we are poisoning our body every day with foods we eat and the things we drink. Please welcome wellness consultant John Rose to the show this morning. <laughs> good morning, John. Hi, Deborah. Good are to you? see you. Doing good, thank you. Okay, we're going to show people specifically some of the combinations of fruits and vegetables that you say can help alleviate or get rid of certain diseases and other ailments. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about your philosophy. And you say we should not be eating meat, that that's probably one of the number one culprits in many of the diseases that we get. That's right. Uh, our anatomy is not designed to eat flesh. Our intestines are too long. Um, if you look at the anatomy of all the plant eaters and all the meat eaters, our anatomy is identical to the plant eaters. So what happens when we eat flesh foods, it putrefies as it goes through the system. It takes too long to go through the system. Okay. And you have to pay attention to how long it goes through, because if it goes through too long, not all of it comes out. And meat doesn't have any fiber in it, doesn't have any carbohydrates in it. It's just not the best food for us. And what are the problems caused when that food does not come out? Well, we literally create our own personal cesspool. And this makes us smell bad and look bad and feel bad and think bad and even act bad. Yeah. You it's the cause of meat. illnesses and ill behaviors. I haven't eaten flesh in 10, 15 years. When or so. you say flesh, it sounds so much different than saying meat. You haven't eaten flesh. And, and, uh, and the yeah. way that, that a couple of people who had explained it to me was they said, think about this. If you were getting a kidney transplant, for example, you have to take anti rejection drugs because our bodies just don't like foreign protein. So, in a sense, is that what it's like when, you, when we eat meat, putting foreign protein to an in extent, our body? Yeah, our body doesn't like anything that doesn't belong in there. When we eat unnatural foods, there's two types of uh, mucus in our body. There's healthy mucus and pathogenic mucus. Mm -hmm. And the same way if we were to inhale a dust particle, for example, uh, our body would encapsulate with mucus so it wouldn't go down and attack one of our internal organs, and that way we could reject it later. Yeah. Well, when we eat the wrong food, we coat it with mucus so it goes through the body more like a mop instead of a broom. Okay. And it leaves that slimy layer as it goes through meal after meal, and that builds up, and it's why we all have bulging bellies as we age. It's not fat, or all fat. A lot of it's unlimited waste matter. Okay. And I know this for a fact because I, I found out about this when I was playing competitive tennis. I was exercising seven, eight hours every day, 50 hours every week. Got my body fat percentage down to 5.8%, but I still had a small bulge down here, and I couldn't figure out why I didn't have an old 28-inch waist. Uh -huh. Well, now I know it wasn't fat. I go on a 90-day juice fast, and I documented 20 pounds of uneliminated waste matter that came out of my system. It blew you my mind. You are in a fast right now, as a matter of fact. I'm on day six of my 110th fast. Yeah. I fasted six. In the first six years of my research, I fasted almost 600 days so I could learn how to do this and teach other people. Yeah, and you say research, and that's what you base all of this on. I want to point out you're not a medical doctor. That's right. So um, I have not been formally miseducated. Yeah, <laughs> but you have uh, uh, the research that you've done, and that's what you you have based all of this on. Okay, when you talk about cleansing your system, right? You do several things to cleanse your system, and that to you, you have these pictures that, that you want to show us that is the proof to you that that helps clean out your system. We want to take a look at uh, mm -hmm. what I believe is a colon that has all this stuff that you say is collected over the years, That's the meat, right. stuff, and then a colon that has been cleaned out. These are pictures of uneliminated waste matter, which is the residue from unnatural foods. 
the 20 pounds of filth that came out of me looked exactly like this. And I 20 coached, pounds? I had 20 pounds of stuff that yeah. had just been stuck in there for years? Well, yeah, you've heard the stories of John Wayne. When he died, they said he had 40 pounds in him, and Elvis Presley had the same amount. Um, most of us just don't have any idea what's going on inside of us. And when you do what it takes to get rid of that waste matter, you won't believe what will come out of you. Now, the pictures are up on the TV right now. There's a healthy colon on the left-hand side. Uh -huh. On the right-hand side, there are six X-ray pictures of actual colons. And look how twisted and bent out of shape they are. Yeah. And this is what happens when we put in the wrong food. It just doesn't go through the system the right way. It takes too long. And if it doesn't come out fast enough, it causes yeah. problems. Now, you purified your system, and you eat in a whole different way than most of us do. Um, <clears throat> you don't eat meat. Right. What would be a typical, I know you're in a fast right now, but what would be a typical breakfast and lunch for you? Well, I am a research scientist. I don't just, because I read a book, I don't just accept what they say. Uh -huh. I've read close to 300 books on this subject. And I'm constantly doing research. The first six years, I did research on cleansing. Now I'm doing research on a building diet. So I eat what I call an ideal diet for building. Now an ideal diet for building should only be consumed for people who have reached an ideal stage. Okay. And for most of us, that means we need to go through a transition period to help us do that. If we rate all of our diets on a scale of one to 10, where one's the worst and 10's the best, uh -huh. I'm saying I found number 10. Now when you hear what I say, you're gonna think, that's extreme, and I'm gonna say, you're right, it yeah, is. Yeah. Compared to where you're at, you're on one end, I'm on the other, you're on the worst end, I'm on the best end. So what do you want out of life? Okay. You, we only get out of life what we put in it. So the point I want to make sure you make is you can't just jump from one to 10. It would shock right. your system. You, you can't go from the burger and fries yeah, right. to, to so, doing to what you what do, which a typical meal would it be It would what? shock your system. It'd be too much fiber. Uh, I'm basically a raw foodist or fruitarian. Uh -huh. I eat predominantly fruit throughout the day, but I also eat vegetables and salads and sprouts and nuts. Yeah, we're gonna take I, a look at a, 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 a meal that you would take in a little bit later on in the okay. show, and so it, it's, it, it ain't a pan burger and fries, folks. <laughs> but anyway, um, in terms of detoxing our system, there's right. several things that we can do, uh, as I mentioned, that fit certain needs. In terms of detoxing, we had one of our staffers try this because this right. is a tough thing to do. If you're used to eating three meals a day and snacking throughout the day, yeah. to suddenly reduce that to just juice Something you've never tough. done. Yeah. It's something you've never done. But she was willing to try it. And tell heart. us about the ingredients that went into what's called kind of the lemonade Yes, what Wendy diet. did is known as a lemonade diet, and it uses two tablespoons of grade B maple syrup, two tablespoons of lemon juice or lime juice freshly squeezed, a dash of cayenne pepper, which is about a tenth of a teaspoon, uh -huh. and to that we add about 10 ounces of medium warm water. And that will produce 130 calories, and you need to drink somewhere between 9 to 12 glasses a day to get your 1,200 to 1,500 calories that we need, respectively, for women and men. Uh -huh. If you're more active, you need to add more maple syrup because that's where the calories are coming from. Okay. What about other supplements? You need to add uh, some flax oil to get your essential fatty acids for men, but women need more omega-6, so they'd want to add something that has borage in it or evening primrose oil. Uh, uh, omega-6 turns into prostaglandins, which is a hormone women yeah. need for their uterus. Okay, so. well, Wendy was all excited when she first started. Okay, right. so let's take a look at day one of Wendy trying the Master Cleanser or the Lemonade Diet. Great. Okay, here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, something. I don't know what these are. Some kind of little black pills that they told me I have to take. And they said it's uh, calories. So these, this is my calories for the day, 20 calories in each. So I'm officially starting with this right now. I'm about to take these, and that means there's no turning back. And today is what? It's Friday, Friday morning. I am starting, and if I can last until Tuesday, it'll be a miracle. I'm a junk food junkie, so here goes, down the hatch, we'll see. Diet Dr. Pepper, I'll just see. I'm officially fasting. Here we go. I'm not aware of too many things. All right, that was the beginning, but could she stick with it? We'll find out throughout the show. And by the way, she washes it down with a diet soda. Good idea, bad idea? Not at all, because that's going to make the kidneys work too hard, and that's going to make her more prone to have cleansing reactions, headaches and fever and nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. We make our kidneys work way too hard. Fortunately, they can do more then they're capable of doing a whole lot more than they need to do so they can last for a long time. Yeah. But we really do abuse our body. We pretty much treat our body like a rental car. Yeah. So it's not a good idea to, you, you don't want to put anything in your system that's going to make it difficult to digest or, or eliminate. Okay, well, we said we were going to show you some of the specific things that you can combine to help alleviate uh, certain symptoms from certain diseases. For example, how many of you have a problem with arthritis? Yeah, several of you in the, yeah, the audience have had a problem with arthritis before. You say grapefruit and pineapple can help with arthritis? I don't necessarily say that, but some people do. Mm -hmm. There's bromelain in it and that will help the symptoms, but this is a very important point. 
we're too focused on symptoms. As opposed and, to and the everything cause is, of the everything disease. is cause and effect. You don't start at step number two, the symptoms, and that's what our medical industry does. They go straight to the symptoms. You've got to go to the cause. So if you have arthritis, you don't want to get rid of the symptom by, by drinking grapefruit and pineapple. You want to go on a juice fast and get rid of all the waste matter. If you're going to do that, then drink some grapefruit and pineapple. Could you say but some if, of that waste matter it could be what's causing it? It is what's causing it. You bet it is. Okay. Now, the grapefruit will help eliminate the inorganic calcium deposits, which have an affinity for our joints. Uh -huh. But so does uric acid, which comes from meat. So that's another leading cause, you know, pretty much most of our killer diseases are caused from eating meat, or heart disease, or cancer, or arthritis, diabetes. You quit eating those and you won't have any of those symptoms. It's that simple. Now, that's not a very popular message, so don't let it overwhelm you. Take it one day at a time. The best thing you can do is do a juice fast, because you've got to prove to yourself that this exists, and when you get rid of it, the pain goes away. And if you're going to do that, then by all means, you can add grapefruit and pineapple. But don't keep doing what you've always done and expect different results. That's the definition of insanity. Okay. Okay. Right? We have Connie Powers in our audience this morning. And Connie, you've gone through a number of fasts for a 90-day period. Yes, I have. What was it like the first few days, and what did you feel like at the end of that fast? Uh, the first few days, uh, it takes a little getting used to not eating and things like that. But at the end, I did a 90-day cleanse, and I just felt wonderful. Things happened in my body that I never thought would happen. Uh, things like? Pardon? Things like? What happened in your body that you never thought Well, of? Uh, for instance, I had a bunion on my foot that's hereditary in my family, and it went away. Uh, my hair, my skin. Uh, and there's one very important point about doing cleanses. It's anti-aging. You're it's really weird. 150 years old, we understand. And right. uh, no. I'm 60 years old. <laughs> you're, you're how old? 60 years old. Uh, well, I guess it's there is a point here, isn't there? Aging. It's, wow. It's, it changed my life, and I owe it to John Rose. Yeah, and John, how often would you do this? How often would you, you know, fast? She, she did 90 days at a time, you know, at that first time, but how you can't do this for the rest people of your have, life. People, no, no, it's not a way of life. It's only something you do temporarily to blast out the waste matter from eating the wrong foods. And then eventually, hopefully, you'll stop eating the wrong foods, but for most of us, that's a learning experience. It took me five years to reach a point where I'm at now, yeah. and I wasn't able to let go of all my old foods overnight, and some of y'all may never get rid of your old favorite foods, but the fact that you won't be able to do it means you need to learn how to go back in there and blast it out, and that's the best way to do it is a juice fasting. Every time you juice fast, you're going to be able to get rid of more and more bad foods. Okay. Well, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with more on the combinations of different uh, vegetables and fruits and what they can do for our bodies. We'll be right back. believe what this woman says the coffee enema has done to change her life. Plus, find out which juice combinations this woman says got rid of her varicose veins. <laughs> this morning we're talking about the benefits of detoxing. Wellness consultant John Rose says juice fasting is one of the most aggressive ways to cleanse and purify your body. And John is sharing some of his more popular juice recipes with us this morning. All right, watermelon juice. Oh, my favorite. I love watermelon. Uh -huh. I start my day off usually with watermelon. Okay, besides um, tasting good, yeah. what does it do for our bodies? It's a great diuretic. It cleanses the kidneys. Um, the rind, when you juice a watermelon, you use the rind and seeds and all. Uh -huh. And it's best not to buy watermelon without seeds. Seeds are the organs of the plant. When we started making foods without seeds, we started messing with Mother Nature. And the rind of the watermelon has all the proteins we need, the chlorophyll. Um, it's one of the best fruits to consume. It's 8% protein. Mm -hmm. See, I never think about fruits having protein in it. When somebody says they're um, a vegetarian or, right. or a fruit fruitarian, fruitarian, yeah, right. fruitarian, I always think, you know, well, where do they get their protein from? But you don't realize that it's in a lot of um, fruits and vegetables. You also brought uh, an interesting point when you said, uh, go ahead and, and include the rind in the you whole bet. bit. There are a lot of juices that we can buy over the counter. And a lot yeah. of us, for convenience, we just get it off the shelf in a jar. Right. Good idea, bad idea. We're not getting the best ingredients? In no, it's a horrible idea because everything that's purchased in a store is pasteurized. And it's heat treated. And when we heat treat foods, when we raise the temperature above 118 degrees, we kill the life force inside the food, which is known as, as an enzyme. There are food enzymes inside this food that will help us digest it. And when you're doing a juice fast, you can't use store-bought juices because you need those enzymes to help break up the sticky mucus. Okay. That, binds everything together. This is watermelon juice, right? Yes. Okay. Mm. Tastes a lot different than something that you would buy it out does. of the store. Not as sweet. And Number of course one. we did make this about 30 minutes ago and you got it. That's an important factor we have to understand is when you make your juices you got to drink them immediately because the oxidation process kicks in and it becomes bitter right away and the nutrients are lost. Okay. In fact if you're doing cabbage juice 
If you don't drink it within one or two minutes, it won't heal ulcers, and they've proven that it will heal ulcers if you go to cabbage juice. Wow. Okay. And watermelon's good for what now? A diuretic. It cleanses the kidneys out, uh -huh. flushes the kidneys. It's it's high in protein. It's uh, and again, the rind in the watermelon has all the essential amino acids we need. And good for bladder infections as well. Oh, you bet. If, in fact, if you were to add some cayenne pepper, juice some water. If you have a, a kidney infection, juice some watermelon. Uh, throw a clove of garlic or two in there and put a dash of cayenne pepper on it. Garlic and cayenne pepper together is nature's antibiotic. Hmm. And you can whip out your kidney infection without going to the doctor. If you take antibiotics, antibiotics aren't prejudiced. They kill all life. And they go after the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria. Uh -huh. So the reason why we have so many health problems in our society, especially things like candida, is we're doing the antibiotics, and that's killing the friendly bacteria, and that's how the candida overgrow. Okay. So if you have an infection, by all means, use garlic and cayenne. Okay. Um, we have Marlena Thomas, who is in the uh, audience this morning as well, and she says thanks to uh, Juice Fasting, she has reaped several life-changing benefits. Good morning, Marlena. Hi, Deborah. What kinds of things have you done uh, in terms of juicing, and what has been the result? Well, I went on a 47-day fast, and um, after I broke my fast, um, geez, everything was just so different. Mm -hmm. I'd asked the audience earlier, I said, how many of you would like to lose weight? And just about everybody raised their hand. And so you, we want to take a look at a before picture. You actually lost a lot of weight as a result of this juicing as well. This is your before picture. How many months ago was this? Um, six. Six months ago. Five to six months ago. And look at you now. What else did you change to lose that type of weight? What else did you change besides just juicing? I, I juiced. I, I only juiced for 47 days, 52 days. and you, you didn't exercise and all that stuff either? I usually exercised. Before I started my fast, I exercised. But on my fast, I hardly exercised. I was just taking it easy. Yeah. Although I was very, very full of energy, a whole lot of energy. You had a lot of energy? Oh, yes. I've got two kids, so, you know, I have yeah. a whole lot of energy. And um, my varicose veins disappeared completely. Varicose veins went oh, away? Oh, yes, a whole lot. Right here after my daughter's birth. Uh huh. Completely went away. A lot of spotting, you know, women. A lot of, lot of belly ache, different problems. I wore glasses before. Now I don't use them anymore. Oh, that must have been carrot juice. Yes. No, was it really carrot juices. juice? Yeah. You yeah. know, and we used to always hear that eat a lot of carrots. It's good for your eyes, and it can, you know, it's make. It's true. You... It's true. Carrot juice every day. I had about two, one to two quarts of carrot juice every day. And what, what would you? What would a typical breakfast be like for you? Or do you just, do you just drink juice all day long? I just drank juice. Different juices, anything I liked. And when I felt like I wanted to quit, I called John. And he encouraged me again, and I continued. Mm -hmm. And um, Tell um, me the truth, I Marlena. Just when so you saw a burger sitting across from you, didn't you want to just snatch that thing? I did. <laughs> I still do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, when I go back into my regular way of eating, I just feel sluggish again. And yeah. I start feeling bad again. What, have you changed in terms of, like, do you eat less meat now? Do you eat more fruits and vegetables? I eat very little meat and a whole lot of fruits and vegetables, okay. if any meat. Uh huh. All right. Well, mm -hmm. congratulations to you on losing that weight. Thank you. Obviously, something that's really important for us, whatever we're eating, is to make sure that our digestive system is healthy right. so that we're getting the benefits out of that food. So apple pear juice is good for helping digestion? It really is. It's, uh, if, when you're juice fasting, it's one of the best drinks to drink right before you go to bed. It'll stimulate the peristaltic wave, so when you wake up, you'll be sure and have a bowel movement. Uh -huh. um, it's, uh, it's, it's good if you have an upset stomach. And uh, it's really one of the most tastiest drinks you'll find, I believe. Okay. All right, let's check back in with our producer, Wendy Granado, to see how she's holding up on the lemonade fast to right. cleanse her body. Fuel burning fast on an empty tank. Okay, right, it's day two, and I've been lucky enough to have my wonderful husband join me in the fast. I'm hungry, and I'm tired, and I'm scared. <laughs> Yeah, how did you feel, baby? You I feel hungry. And what else? And irritable, maybe? Lucy? How many hours has it been since you've had any food? Uh, it's been, it's going on 20 hours now since I haven't eaten anything. I'm about to have my ninth glass cut today, and I got a headache, and I feel terrible. So. I'm going to call John Rose, and we're going to ask him what we should do, because we're starving. It's ringing. Just in case he's not there, do you have the number to the Chinese place? Hi, John. How are you doing? <laughs> yes, I'm storming. My husband, John, is, uh, he decided to go on it with me. 
it's good because we've kind of been serving as support for each other, but then on the other hand, we're like, ah, let's quit, let's both quit. What can we eat? So we're wondering, is there any, we both have headaches, pretty bad headaches. And this is really day two for me. It's day one, the end of day one for him. I mean, is there, um, is there, he, he wants to know if Chinese food is out. <laughs> there are no toxins in Chinese food. <laughs> He's trying to convince me there are no toxins in Chinese food, but I'm just not buying it. So is there anything that, there's nothing at all we can eat, right? definition of fast is no food at all, so. <laughs> I hate fasting. <laughs> okay, so will Wendy and John survive the lemonade diet? Find out later on in the show. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> fasting got rid of his bout with gout. Find out which juices he used. And do you know what combination of vegetables can help heal your stomach ulcer? We'll tell you when we come back. We're talking about detoxing our bodies. More and more people are doing it to get rid of the poisons we eat, uh, breathe, and drink every day. So wellness consultant John Rose says those toxins are responsible for the diseases that we get. And so there's a way to get that stuff out of our system as best as we can, doing that uh, through fruits and vegetables and juicing. Um, we heard a little bit about what carrot juice can do. Marlena had said carrot juice, she's not wearing her reading glasses anymore. Exactly. Because of doing juicing, and she thinks that's the reason why is because of uh, a lot of carrot juice. A lot of combinations of carrot juice can do things for us as well. Right. Um, let's take a look at a carrot spinach blend. I have to tell you, John, this does not sound too um, tasty. It actually very, it is very tasty. It'll surprise you. Of course, it's been, that was been made a while ago, so it, it becomes bitter. You know bitter what? i got to tell you, this is not bad. It's good, isn't it? This is not bad. Yeah. Put a little ice in that, a little cognac. And, there you I mean, go. I'm sorry. No, just a little, <laughs> little ice in that. Mm. It's good. It's good. Now, what, what is this going to do for us? Well, spinach of the dark leaf, green leafy vegetables is the highest in protein. So when you combine spinach and carrot together, a glass of carrot and spinach juice can have like 10 grams of protein. We only need about 40, 50 grams of protein a day. Yeah. We don't need as much as we've been told. And what would be the advantage of doing it this way as opposed to just um, grabbing a carrot stick and eating spinach? Because you can see this bowl here of fiber. If you could see what all that looked like before we juiced it and then look at the fiber and the juice, you'd get an idea. Well, we're not making our body have to separate the fiber from the juice. So when we drink it this way, we get it right away. Our body doesn't expend any energy. So basically everybody just absorbs it? Exactly. It assimilates it easier. And that's the whole idea behind all seven of my programs. So I have seven alt programs all together. Three are for fasting, three are for diet, mm -hmm. and then one uses herbs. And all of them are designed to reduce digestive activity. Okay. So the juices are the best way to reduce our digestive activity. Carrot, apple, celery. Great for insomnia and headaches. But once again, I have to emphasize that if you have headaches or insomnia, those are signs of a much more serious problem. And you have to take responsibility for yourself and quit looking for a magic bolt. Even this would be a, considered a magic bolt if you don't go on a fast. But if you're having trouble sleeping and that's affecting your life, and it will, because you can't just look at food. I look at all the factors that affect our health. If our air, water, and food's polluted, we're going to be sick. If we don't get adequate amounts of sunshine, exercise, and sleep, we'll be sick. Mm -hmm. If we don't interpret these six interactions with the environment the right way, our, our mental attitude, that can cause problems too. So if you're having trouble sleeping, you can drink some carrot, celery, and apple juice. That will help you sleep. It'll help you get rid but of headaches. But only if you're doing everything else that you need to as well. It's ideal to do this in conjunction with it. I don't believe in, in using herbs by themselves. I don't believe in using colonics by themselves. Um, you can develop a sense false of security by going to those things and think you can keep doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Once again, we've got to take responsibility. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. We've got to change what we're doing. Okay. And that's my mission in life is to help us wake up and realize we don't need to suffer. All of us are suffering needlessly. Depression, all of our diseases are, are caused because those are warning signs. Pain is a warning sign telling us something's wrong. Yeah. And, the and we're doing it to ourselves by putting that stuff in We're doing in it to body. ourselves so we can correct it. That's the good news. Okay. Um, Paul Rosenberg is the one person who corrected it. And Paul, you did juicing as well. What did you do juicing for? What kind of juicing program were you on? And, and what were the results? Well, first of all, I had a problem with too much steak, too much prime rib, and too much red wine. It's a problem <laughs> all of us have. <laughs> and one day I woke up and I thought I broke my foot. I went to the doctor and the doctor said, you didn't break your foot, you have arthritic gout. And I said, what is arthritic gout? Well, I found out what it was and it wasn't any fun, let me tell you, it's extremely painful. What was the treatment for it that the doctor suggested? Well, I forgot the name of the drug, it starts with an A, allopurinol or something That's like right. that. But. Uh, 
I was prescribed to take two tablets a day. It had serious side effects. And I happened to see one of John's info commercials, and I gave him a call. And I remember bumping into him at Whole Foods all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And I went on a 10-day juice fast. And that juice fast thoroughly cleansed out my kidneys. And in 10 days, it was enough of a cleansing to eliminate my gout completely. I, have, I haven't been on medication ever since. Did you ever go back to the doctor and say, look, it's gone? <laughs> no, I haven't. I don't want to go back to the doctor. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the preventative medicine here is what we have going on. That's and also, right. uh, Paul Capello, you went on a juice fast as well. What did it do for you? Uh, it's just incredible results. Um, I did it first off to improve my athletics because like John, I was working out five, six hours a day and finishing mid-pack. I raced pro mountain biking and uh, off-road triathlons and triathlons and uh, I was tired of just working out all day and then trying to carve a load with the pasta and the salads and wasn't really getting any better. And uh, when I saw John's info commercial, I uh, switched to the juice fast and ever since uh, last year, my first fast, I've either been first or second in every race I've raced in. Uh, plus, just feel better, all my health benefits. I didn't realize the health benefits that were going to come. Yeah, I was going to ask you did, you, did you believe that you would feel any different? I didn't, I couldn't believe it, you know. But it, when, when I heard John talk, it made so much common sense that that had to be the solution for me. And sure, there's some sacrifice and there's some pain to go through it. And I'm fortunate enough to have my wife, Allison, and my daughter, Maddie, and support a family. But you have to get through that and you have to sacrifice a little bit to get the results. You can't get the results like this from a pill or from a quick fix or anything like that. So, yeah. and you get that reward too, knowing that you've sacrificed and... Yeah, and the sacrifice is breaking old habits, that's true. And so the good thing is your, your, your child now knows that, you know, if she goes to school and packs a lunch, it's going to be like juice as uh, opposed to, you know, bologna sandwich. Absolutely. But anyway. She juices with me. <laughs> and right. so does my wife, so it's great. Thank you very much, Thank Paul. You. Okay, you said there are some sacrifices. We saw uh, our Deborah Duncan show producer, Wendy Granado, going through uh, this with her husband. And they were hungry the last time we visited with them. Let's see where they are right now. Good morning, world. It's another beautiful morning. And look, it's time for breakfast. Mm -mm. But let me wake my wife breakfast. I'm going to feed her some. Breakfast in bed. Here's my boy torturing me with Pop Tarts. Well, it's day two for me, day three for Wendy. And mm, mm, mm. you wake up, and the first thing you think about is the nice, nutritious Mommy, breakfast you're going to have. Mommy. I'm going to add a little something to Wendy's this morning. She's going to get mm, 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 a little extra lemon in hers. Boy, it's a special day. Mm -mm, look at me, fixing breakfast for the family. Okay, let's go get it. Sweetie? No, uh-uh. Sweetie, uh -uh, uh -uh. it's breakfast in that bed. Not even funny. Look, honey. No. It's Joe, breakfast no, in bed. Not even funny. Get out of here. <laughs> here, honey. Get out of here. I made here. you breakfast. Look at it. <laughs> I slaved all over the stove. Get out of your mind. Get out of here. Look, honey, it's breakfast in bed. <laughs> no, I want a burrito for McDonald's, and if I can't have that, I don't want anything. Get out of here. Here, honey. <laughs> okay, it's getting tough in the Granado household. Will they survive? We'll find out later in the show. We'll be right back. woman's amazing story. Are you ready for this? She says a coffee enema saved her life. Plus, this woman says a series of colonics makes living with cancer much more tolerable. Don't go away. <laughs> Nina Kemp has been fasting on John Rose's juicing regimen, but she says she's benefited the most from what he told her to do with coffee. Please welcome Nina and her husband James to the show this morning. Before we get to what you do with coffee every morning, um, <laughs> let's talk about what your life was like before. You were just basically, you say, a vegetable. Pretty much. I was in a lot of pain. And I started juicing and doing the coffee enemas. Mm -hmm. And the coffee enemas helped the pain immensely. You had tried what kinds of things for your pain before? Well, I'd gone the routes of pain pills, which they got where they didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. Of course, and, the problem there could be addiction to pain pills as well. Yeah, and 
I don't know about that I was addicted. I know I got off of them, but yeah. still I did this juice fast and um, it's really helped and with the coffee enemas, the pain has, there was times that I couldn't even roll over in the bed. He'd have to help me. Yeah. And James, what was life like before when she was in that kind of pain? And well, it wasn't good. Uh, most of the work, housework, duties, uh, bill paying, shopping off, had to be done. So I had to do it until she was able to. And until we could get her able to, we just had to suffer through. Yeah. Even social events, you couldn't really go out of the house? We didn't go anywhere. Uh -uh. I worked and came home, took care of her. And I would imagine you got to the point of being desperate. I was ready to scream. Yeah. And so when John suggested something like juicing, had you ever heard about juicing or anything like that before? Well, yeah, I've heard a little about juicing, but I didn't really know how to combine the fruits and the vegetables and things of that yeah. sort, you know, the yeah. right combinations and things. So John helped you with that, and then he suggested, and this gives new meaning to the best part of waking up is coffee. I mean, um, <laughs> coffee enemas every a morning. Coffee, and, and John, a coffee enema. Okay, this sounds strange to a lot of people. Obviously, that's yeah. not where we're used to putting our coffee. Right. But um, <laughs> why coffee? Why not just plain water? Why coffee? Well, the caffeine in the coffee, when you do a coffee enema and lay on the right side of your body, the coffee goes through the hemorrhoidal veins and goes into the liver and opens up the bile ducts. Now, our liver is a very important organ. It's supposed to detoxify all the poisons that go through the system. But if we're overloading our system, that can be and, a problem. And it, so it can't detoxify all of them, so it stores them. And by doing a coffee enema, that will release the stored po poisons in the liver. And the man who made this famous was Dr. Max Gerson, and he was saying that you, you can't get cancer unless your liver is damaged. And he was using coffee enemas to help clean the liver. They also used to use coffee enemas during the war when they ran out of heroin to give the soldiers who were shot. They would give them the coffee enemas to relieve the pain. Huh. And it's made a, how long did it take before it made a difference for you? Uh, well, about a week before I really started, where I could get out of the bed yeah, by myself. Yeah, because this would not have been possible before to come to the show and, and no, sit here and talk to us. No, not at all. Well, Nita, we're glad you're feeling better. It, it's, a, it's a strange sounding thing, <laughs> but uh, we're glad you're feeling yeah. better. Uh, thank you for joining us with your story today. Okay, remember Wendy, our producer? Well, the weekend is coming to an end for them, and how well do the Granados hold up? Let's take a look. Welcome to the jungle. We're taking day by day. It is um, Sunday. It's day three for me, day two for John, and I'm like about up to here with this lemonade stuff. John Rose called us this morning and said that we'll start to see like all these different things happening. And we